This is the range country, where the pounding hooves of untamed horses still thunder over mountains, meadows, and canyons. Every herd has its own leader, but there is only one fury. Fury, king of the wild stallions. And here in the wild west of today, hard-riding men still battle the open range for a living. Men like Jim Newton, owner of the Broken Wheel Ranch, and Pete, his top hand, who says he cut his teeth on a branding iron. Wild as Fury is, that's the one human voice he's learned to love and obey. The voice of the boy who once saved his life, Jim Newton's boy, Joey. a mutual trust and affection that everyone can understand. Especially a woman like Helen Watkins, Joey's school teacher and unfailing champion. Kneel down, let me get on you. And there they are together, a great wild horse and the only person on earth who can ride him, Joey and Fury. Are you Joey Clark, Jr.? Yes, sir. That used to be my name. But it's Joey Newton now. What's that Junior mean? Well, that means you were named after your father. Didn't anyone ever tell you? No, sir. I don't think so. I never knew my father. I know. That was a great misfortune for both of you. Thank you. Good afternoon. How do you do? Joey, do you know this gentleman? I was just introducing myself to the boy. I'm Joseph Clark, Sr. Joseph Clark, Sr., not Joey's father. Yes, ma'am. But you can't be. Ma always said you was dead. A tree wreck or something. I'm afraid the stories of my death are greatly exaggerated. I'm Helen Watkins, Joey's teacher and a friend of his legal guardian, Jim Newton. Have you seen him? Not as yet. I was just catching the bus out to the ranch when I saw your school letting out and... Well, I just couldn't resist saying hello to the son I haven't seen in so many years. Well, Mr. Clark, suppose we get into my station wagon and we'll go out to the ranch. Well, that'll be nice. The sooner I present myself to Mr. Newton, the better. Come along, son. So after visiting the orphanage and learning where Joey was, I went to the county courthouse and obtained this order from Judge Norris restoring custody of Roy to me. It seems to be pretty final. By way of identification, here's my army discharge, Joy's birth certificate, and my marriage license. Look them over at your leisure. Thank you, I will. And I want you to know that I appreciate all you've done for the boy. It's a fine thing you did, taking him into your home. We've come to think pretty highly of Joey here. And Joey? I know it's hard for you to understand how I could have stayed away so long. Now that I've seen you, I can't understand it either. I've, I've missed some beautiful years. I bet you don't remember this. No. You remember who Anne was, don't you? My mother. That's right. Your dear mother. A lot you cared what happened to Mom. Or me either. Oh, son. I know that I've got a lot to account for, but that's all water under the bridge, and you and I are going to start out new, all right? But, Jim, do I have to go away with him? He never cared about me before. And now, just when I'm happy and everything. Well, Joey, think what it'll mean to, to have your own father to see you through the years ahead until you're a, a grown man ready to take your place in the world. I was hoping that would be you. So have I. But the law is very strict about things like that. It demands a long waiting period to see how you and I can get along together. But we were getting along all right, weren't we? Sure we were, Joey. But now you have to remember that this is your real father. And his rights come first. We can't interfere with them. Joey, maybe you'll feel different when you find out how wonderful it is to have a father. I was thinking the same thing, Miss Watkins. 
if there was just some way to overcome the boy's natural resentment towards me before we leave here. Well, look, why don't you stay here with us at the ranch for a few days until you and Joey get better acquainted? No, no, I, I think we uh, Clarks have imposed on you enough as it is. What do you think, Miss Watkins? I think it'd be very helpful to him and to you if you did stay, so you can get to know each other better. All right, we'll stay a few days. And Joey, I want you to know that I understand your feelings, and I'd like for you to try to understand mine. Yes, sir. That's the spirit, Joey. <laughs> Sorry you got so dirty, Fury. But I had to spend some time with my father since he got here. You know, at first I was all set on hating him like anything. Didn't seem like I needed anybody else. With friends like you and Jim and Pete and Miss Helen. But it's kind of good to know you got a father after all. Nice to hear you say that, son. Oh, hello. <laughs> well, I always know where to look for you. Can't say as I blame you either, because he's a fine looking animal. Don't get too close. He's still wild mean to everybody, except me. Well, your talent with horses must be inherited. You know, I used to have a way with him myself. Ah! Behave yourself, Fury. I told you, he's my dad. You do have control of him, don't you? I bet you're going to miss him badly when you go away with me. Yes, sir. Terribly bad. Kind of taken to this ranch life, haven't you? And to Mr. Newton, too. Sure have. You know, son, it seems a shame to have to take you away from all this. I can't give you anything like it. At least I'd have a father. That means more than anything else. You've given me a lot to live up to, but I'll do my best. You've got no reason to feel that way about her. He's trying to be a good father to me. I don't know what got into you. Late. Where you been? Waiting for a chance to walk up here unobserved. But we can't foul it up with a false move now because we're too near the payoff. Then you're inside as a boy's old man. Put her there, pal. Guest of honor, sitting pretty. Even got the boy calling me daddy. <laughs> it's gonna be a soft touch, Mac. But when? I'm getting fed up of eating out of tin cans and those mosquitoes are getting fat off of me. Now relax. Relax. I've told you a hundred times, you can't force a deal like this. You gotta play the sucker along until he's ripe and ready to drop of his own accord. If he ever checks on those court orders you forged... That court order would even fool a judge whose name I signed to it. When do we get some action? Sooner than you think. Look, this came in this morning's mail. That phony real estate letter you told me about. <laughs> and if that doesn't get to Newton's heart, nothing will. Well, when do you spring it on him? This afternoon. Right after lunch, we'll all be sitting on the front porch. Then Mr. Newton will notice my very sad expression. Buck up, Joey. It isn't as if you were never going to see any of us again. Well, the school year will be over before you know it. And then if your father will let you, you can come and spend your whole vacation here next summer. That's uh, very generous. Thank Mr. Newton, Joey. Thanks, Jim. But that's a long time. Maybe Fury will forget me. No, horses have memories like elephants. Now, why don't you ride on over to Charlie and Ted's and say goodbye, huh? I guess I will. Reckon I'll tie into them dishes. Well, you don't seem to be particularly happy about it yourself, Clark. I was until I received this letter in the morning mail. No? Bad news? It's from the real estate company that's handling that deal on the cottage I was telling you about. Mm -hmm. They want $1,000 by Monday, or else I'll lose a deposit I put up on it. $1,000, huh? Well, when did you expect to pay it? Well, I was hoping for a 30-day extension. But I guess it's a hall room for Joey and that boarding house of mine until I can find a better place or work up to something better. Well, a boarding house is no place for Joey. Well, I know that, but what else can I do? Well, come on inside. Maybe we can work out something. Get 
least this is going to be our last ride for a long time. figures out, Clark. Even if I make the down payment for you, there's no assurance that you can carry through on the deal. You'll be too heavily in debt. I guess I was over-optimistic. It's been one of the troubles all through my life. You know, I'd do almost anything for Joey's future happiness. But I wouldn't be doing him or you a favor if I helped you to get in over your head. Well, I appreciate your frankness, Mr. Newton. It looks as if I'll be returning with Joey to rather dismal surroundings. Well, there's no need to do that. Why don't you let him stay here until you're better prepared to take care of him? It's very nice of you, but I've been looking forward to being with my boy for quite some time. Now that I've learned to know him, I, I just don't feel that I could give him up. You think that's entirely fair to Joey? Maybe you're right. Maybe I ought to get out of his life, disappear again, give him up permanently. Well, that's not what I had in mind. But now that you mention it, it might not be such a bad idea. Have you any suggestions that might make such a sacrifice more... more bearable? I was wondering when we were going to get around to this. The truth is that you came here fully prepared to give up your paternal rights for a price. And all this real estate hocus-pocus was just a build-up to arouse my sympathy. You're a very smart young man, Mr. Newton. I think we understand one another. I'm sure we do. Now, what do you have in mind? Well, I'm not an avaricious man. Say, uh, $10,000. $10,000? Not a high price at all for the sale of your own son. Oh, I wouldn't put it that way. I think Judge Blake might. Judge Blake? Now, wait a minute, Newton. There's no need to call the law in on this. Can't we make some sort of a gentleman's agreement? If $10,000 is too steep? $10,000 is too steep. I don't have that kind of money lying around in cash. Well, can't we make some sort of a compromise? I know how much you think of Joy and what a nice home this would be for my son. I'm willing to make any kind of a reasonable concession. Well, there's no immediate rush. Why don't you let me think it over? Sure. Take all the time you want. I'll, uh, I'll be within calling distance. Judge Blake at the county courthouse. Hello, Judge. Jim Newton speaking. Oh, Joey's fine, Judge. Oh, we have a visitor. He claims he's Joseph Clark Sr., Joey's father. That's right, Judge. And in addition to Clark's personal papers, there's this court order supposedly signed by Judge Norris. Now, how long will it take you to check? All right, I'll hold on. notify the sheriff. I'll take care of it from this end. Thanks, Judge. Pete, Clark is not Joey's father at all. This court orders a phony, and so are the rest of the papers. Why, that no good. Say, he's up in the corral right now, saddling the horse. Maybe he's trying to make a getaway. You must have heard me talking on the telephone. Come on. Start. It'll be a cold trail. And they're not too cold. That horsey pick's got a brand new shoe on his left ball foot. Huh? There's the trail. 
trail. He's heading toward the hills. Come on. We've lost the track. This ground's too hard. Yeah, well, we gotta keep trying. Let's spiral out. Okay. Man, am I glad to see you. Let's have a look at that ten grand. I came up empty. The deal's off. Newton's on my trail now. We gotta get our stuff and get out of here. So you goofed up on the job, huh? Nobody could have worked it any smoother, but that Newton's no sucker. Now, let's go. Where'd you leave the car? The camp where I rented the horses. Joey, what are you doing here? Well, I was cutting across country from Ted's place when I saw you heading this way. Well, what's the idea of following me? Why, nothing, Dad. I just thought maybe you'd like to ride back with me. I'm not going back. I'm going into the city. But, Dad, without me? Now, look, son. Oh, you... break it off. I'm sick and tired of this Daddy and Sonny stuff. What's he mean, Dad? Well, he means that I'm not really your father. Not my father? Then you made up all that stuff. All those lies. What for? Kind of a business deal I had with your friend Newton, but it didn't work out. And if you're smart, you won't make us any trouble. Okay, I won't make any trouble. I'll just go on back home. You're staying right here until we're ready to leave. No rough stuff, Mac. We're in enough trouble already. We can't let this kid ride out and bring Newton and the law on us. He's staying here till we're packed up. Hand me that rope. <laughs> Look out, Mac! That horse is a killer! A killer, huh? I'll fix him. Run, Fury! Never mind about me! Run! He's gonna shoot you! That does it. If Newton sees that horse, we're sunk. Let's leave the camp stuff where it is and let's ride. Well, what are we gonna do with him? We'll take him along with us as far as the car and leave him there. He won't do any shooting if he's with us. Keep your mouth shut or we'll have to gag you.
That's right, Joey. Well, the two of them are going where they won't need any money for a long time. Gosh, Pete, you handled him like he was a year-old calf. Yeah, Joey, but I'm getting a mite too old to be bulldogging anything bigger than a T-bone steak. <laughs> Being an orphan isn't so bad. What do you mean, orphan? Seems to me I make a pretty good stern parent, don't I? You always have Peter Meter run too if Jim gets too stern. Yeah, <laughs> and Fury to fuss over you when you're off the three of us. Gosh, that's right. I have got a man sized family. Isn't that right, Fury? I have got a man sized family. <laughs> <laughs> 